today. Uh, we're going to start the graveside services with uh, military honors from the Air Force. Let's turn the time over to them at this time.
David was uh, 13 years older than me. My youngest cousin retired to the family. So when he was three years old, he was 16. And uh, David uh, gave me five points of wisdom through my life that I'd like to share with you. Uh, these are the verbal ones. There are some pretty amazing things about dangers of tapping into power substations and running lines in our bedroom, which got fire. three years old, I was pretty excited about what Santa Claus might bring when I couldn't go to sleep. Now, Patty's uh, eight years older than me, so both she and uh, David uh, had this little boy that they, they took care of. My parents so I couldn't go to sleep on Christmas Eve. But David came up to me and you know, my parents said, Sometimes, I think it's the best possible advice in terms of lessons. Anger. Take a deep breath. <laughs> That's what he said. Take a deep breath. The second one came when I was uh, 10 years old. As you know, uh, David was an expert skier. He was on the National Ski Patrol, rescued people off the mountains, uh, taught first aid all through the Inland West. Took me skiing up to Park City, and I had been doing my best to see what other people do. I hadn't taken for my lessons, but I was a decent beginner skier. So we went up to Park City, and I was excited. There's a big run called Payday up there. I thought, well, I, I can probably do that. Oh, we didn't go to Payday. We hike, and he takes me to a slope. This seemed to me to be basically a more cliff than slope. He says, here we go. And I said, what? It was what we call a double diamond. He said, Paul, ski harder slopes. He said, you will never, ever reach your potential unless you ski harder slopes. As a beginner, he made me go down a double diamond. I wanted to just cry. Up a hill, up a hill, suddenly they felt very silent. We walked into a place and we saw a site like this graves. Obviously, very quiet, they were very quiet, they were very touched. 
in the closet. Just scared the crap out of me. And me too. I went in. <laughs> but I remember that he had borrowed or bought or something. He got the, the tin man from the Wizard of Oz. And he put it in the closet. She
then we started seeing each other once a week, once every couple of weeks. And then we started seeing each other a couple of times, a couple of times a week. And then I read that David was enjoying his lifestyle also. His life and save his life was enjoying his life. Then I realized though that I was getting emotionally
Texas in 58. class of 58, and he was the 45th uh, class reunion chairman, <clears throat> and uh, he asked me to be on the committee, and we had the, the meetings there at my house, and uh, then I they elected me for the 50th class reunion, and Dave came to that, and, and just uh, enjoyed a wonderful uh, relationship with Dave, and we're certainly
David wore many hats. His friends were as diverse as his accomplishments. Electronics, lost mines, ghost towns, slick rock of southern Utah, Grand Gulch, to the Solomon Islands with Brother Paul. His eloquence of speech. Oh, he, we were held captive by the eloquence of speech, of his speech, the intelligence that he possessed, and storytelling that unearthed another side of David. The slow kings with which he spoke would draw you in and hold your attention around many a campfire sitting in his living room or around a kitchen table with artist amounts of coffee and cigarettes. David was the consummate gentleman, always dignified, proud, and noble. He stood out in the crowd, although never seeking the highlight. In the Uintas, David and I were always the first ones to crawl out of our tents in the morning, leaving our families snuggled in their sleeping bags sound asleep. And I didn't have to get cold, didn't have to get to, uh, cold too long because David had that fire just to crack and the coffee pot right next to it. Um, as soon as soon as the fire was lit. He would go with the shaving kit, biodegradable soap and towel, and he'd usually return before the camp came to life. Uh, on one trip, as we traveled in the mountains of that slick rock, the rain was imminent and sundown, a glorious red accent, and the rocks and the trees around us glowed. The thunder and lightning began. The more treacherous looking every minute I wanted out of that van. This was not a four wheel drive. This was just a van, and I knew that it was going to slide off that mountain. I jumped out while the car was in motion and I wouldn't get back in again. Well, it was night and we made camp. A safe enough place to park and our camp cuisine sitting inside the van. Richard, Dave Evans and I decided to sleep in the van. But David had his waterproof tent and waterproof sleeping bags and decided to pop his small tent up There were Trudy and Dave, two drowned rats, wet from head to toe. The rain pounded most of the night, and his tent got flooded. Sometimes water just doesn't get it. I thank you, David, for expanding my world and my imagination, for being a great friend. He truly cared for his friends. Plus, in association. Thanks for being patient when I didn't understand something. For always remembering our birthdays with phone calls and and emails to Rob and his beautiful Earth Angel wife. I always always allowed him to be center stage. They shared many wonderful trips and adventures together with tons of pictures to show once they got home. A sweet, wonderful life together. And to Tiffany, of whom he was extremely proud, and they were able to talk again. You filled his heart. Having you come back into his life was the icing on the cake. We appreciate your honesty, David. Thank you, thank you for your friendship. Thank you for the laughs, the knowledge that you imparted. Journey and may you journey on. See you again one day. Thank you. Thank you.